Welcome to Nomad PHP Lightning Talks. I'm Joe Ferguson. If you would like to give a 10 minute lightning talk, please email me at joe at nomadphp.com. Right now we have Paul Jones and he'll be talking about the template It's Not the View, a brief inter an introduction to Active Domain Responder. Please make sure you visit Joined In after the talk and leave Paul some feedback. Paul, take it away. Alrighty, thank you. Well, although I'd like to give IRC Maxell's talk, that is, there we go. All right, so tonight's talk is uh, The Template is Not the View. It's a very brief introduction to Action Domain Responder. Please be sure to rate this talk. Uh, it's very important for us as speakers to get feedback, and it's very important for present for uh, conference organizers to, uh, to find out how good a particular talk is. So when we think about our applications, as professional developers, one of the things we are particularly concerned about, or ought to be concerned about, is the separation of concerns within the application. Uh, when it comes to modern web, web applications, we typically think of that separation of concerns in terms of something called model view controller. Model view controller is actually a very old user interface pattern. It rose out of Smalltalk 80 and a guy named Trigve Rinskaug who came up with it, again, in the early 80s, the, uh, for desktop applications. Again, the idea is that you have a model layer that contains all the business logic for the application. That's where your business domain lies. You have a view layer that contains the presentation logic to show that the information from the model to the user. And then you have a controller that puts them both together. Now, because this originated in uh, desktop applications, it turns out that in the formal uh, the formal description of the pattern, there's actually one trio of model view controller for each screen element. So if you've got a user name input field, that input field has a controller, a model, and a view associated with it. If there's an email field, that also has a model view controller associated with it. So, and it, and it also turns out that in the original description of the pattern, the view and the model actually talk to each other. So the controller sets up the view and the model, and then the view can update the model, and the model can send back data directly to the view. We don't actually do this in our web applications. We consider that a poor we consider that poor form when putting together web apps to have the view and the model talking to each other in that way. So model view controller in its formal description is not perfect for web apps, but it's been good enough for us in terms of figuring out the separation concerns for us to use it uh, use it to great effect. So when I was writing my book on modernizing legacy applications, uh, the idea is to be able to take a, a, an include-oriented, uh, page-based spaghetti mess of code and be able to tease apart the different, separate, the, the different concerns within all the page scripts uh, so that we can end up with a, with a fully modernized application. Of course, the first thing there to do, to do there is to centralize all the classes and functions and then replace all the globals with dependency injection. But that's sort of foundational stuff. When we start teasing apart the concerns, in a model view controller sort of way, of course, the first thing we concentrate on is the model. Typically, that means we extract the SQL language uh, in the page scripts to gateway classes so that we can test them independently. And then after that, we extract all of the, f the further business domain logic to transaction scripts or to a service layer so that we can have a model that is separated from the rest of the system and be able to test that independently. Once we have extracted the model, though, we need to go on to working on the presentation layer. And because it's model view controller, the, 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 uh, it seems like the right thing to do is to start extracting all of our view logic to what we normally think of as templates. That is, we want to have some layer that actually outputs HTML or outputs whatever the, the presentation is going to be. So what that means is that in, when we're extracting the presentation from a page script that looks like this, where we've got four slides worth of stuff here. And if you look carefully, you can see that we've got HTML mixed in with business logic. Uh, we've got this form here, uh, and it seems to be skipping forward without me telling it to in any case. So four slides worth of stuff. You can see it's all mixed in together. And there's some there's text area, there's some HTML. And there we see some, uh, what would be business logic, putting together the output for us. And then there's the, the tail end of it. And what we, what we want to do and what we end up doing in the book is we want to take all of that presentation logic out of the script and convert it to a template and then make a call to the template so that the original business logic turns out to be very small. We see that the, or the, the, uh, the, yeah, the original business logic turns out to be very small. We see it here at the, at the top. And then in the, the highlighted section, we can see the part that was originally the presentation logic. But all of that has been extracted to a file called articles.html.php. 
When we set up a template object, we inject the variable, we inject the variables that the template needs in order to, uh, to do its work, and then we run to the template and the controller puts it into a response. And all of this is perfectly fine until we realize that we also have to deal with headers. It turns out that most template systems don't deal with headers at all. So if we're doing some JSON or something like that, and we need to set some headers, and we need to set a status code, what typically happens is back in the controller is where we do setting of headers or setting cookies, that kind of thing. So we'll have our template system uh, that the controller invokes, and the controller invokes the headers so that, all the, so that the response gets built properly. So when we realize this, it turns out that... Um, Having the headers done in the controller separately from the other template work, when we, when we realize what's going on there, it becomes easy to see that when the server is presenting, its, when the server gives its presentation to the client, what it's actually presenting is not just the HTML. It's not presenting just the JSON. It's presenting a full HTTP, res HTTP response. So what the client is receiving as the result of its request to the server is both the bodies and the headers uh, that come in the HTTP response. What this means is that our typical way of thinking about the view as being a template in server-based model view controller is not really accurate. The view in MVC is not just the body. It's not just the template. The view in server-based MVC is the entirety of the HTTP response that comes back. Of course, the problem there is that most template systems don't deal with headers in any way. They don't deal with status codes. Twig doesn't, Aura View doesn't, Zend View doesn't. All that stuff has to happen someplace else. So it turns out that when we are building these kinds of responses, where we need to set headers and set status codes, that kind of thing, by putting that header setting in the controller, that turns out to be a suboptimal separation of concerns in the way we typically do our model view controller applications. The template view is generally built only the HTTP body, and then the remaining controller logic uses a header, set cookie, or manipulates the response directly to change the header values and set the status, set the status values. What this means is that the presentation of the response to the client ends up being mixed between the views, you know, the view templates, and our controller logic. This is not the kind of separation of concerns we want. We want to have all of the presentation stuff in its own layer. Otherwise, we might as well be doing HTML in the controllers. And of course, that's clearly a bad idea. So to remedy, this, I, to, to remedy that problem, the idea is that we need to come up with something that can set the headers and the cookies for us in addition to the template in addition to using templates to set the body, from within a separated presentation layer that the controller can call for us. That's the idea behind the word responder in Action Domain Responder. The responder is a piece of logic that implements setting the, the header, setting the, stat setting the status, setting cookies, that kind of thing. It can additionally use templates for the body content, but again, the point is that the controller does not invoke a template for its view and then uh, uh, set some headers, the controller instead gives some data to the responder, and the responder handles building the response. And that's the key point behind the responder. What's interesting about this is, if we've got a controller with five action, action methods, let's say we've got a blog controller with index, create, read, update, delete, or browse, read, edit, add, delete. Each controller action is going to end up sending back its own sets of status codes. Uh, so read may send back a 404 if it can't find something. Create may send back a 422 if the data that was presented to it by the request is invalid. So you're not necessarily going to be using the same status codes in each method. Well, we've already got one template for each controller action method. We might as well have one responder for, per controller method at this point. So if you've got five actions, you're going to have five different responders that are each capable of building the kind of response that goes along with that action method. What that leads us to is the idea that uh, if we're going to have a controller with five different responders, that means we have to inject one responder per action method that lives in that, in that controller class. Well, that seems like an awful lot of overhead. If we're only invoking one action method, we should only have to inv inject the one responder that we're actually going to need. So where that leads us to is instead of having a controller with multiple methods in it, we make, if you'll pardon the pun, the actions a first class element in the, in, the, uh, in the pattern. So that instead of one controller with five methods, you have one class per action. So instead of 
uh, read, edit, up, delete, update, delete as methods, you have an index action, a create action, and a read action. And then each gets its own responder injected into it. We're, of course, this is about action domain responder. That leaves us with the domain. The domain is exactly equivalent to the model layer and model view controller. I like to use the word domain there so that it invokes the idea of domain driven design. And what that ends up looking like is something like this. We've got a blog action where we're going to read a blog item. We inject just three items into it. We inject the incoming request, the domain element, in this case it's a blog service, and we inject the responder element. We retain those as properties. And then when this action gets invoked, it only does three things. It gets some information from the incoming request. It asks the domain for uh, some information and feeds that into the responder. And then it tells the responder to build a response and return it. So that's the key. Those are the key points behind action domain responder. All the and it turns out that the actions end up being very very thin. All the action does is feed input from the request to a domain layer. It then gets the output from that domain layer and feeds it to a responder. And the responder is entirely in charge of building the response. That includes the HTTP response and the headers and the body. Now we started out with the model view controller graphic. This is what the action domain responder graphic looks like. Again, in model view controller, formally the model and the view are allowed to talk to each other. Uh, again, it's, it's primarily aimed at desktop applications. We've uh, adjusted it for use for the web, but it's not really that, it turned, a lot of people know that it's not really that great, uh, not that great a pattern in terms of being properly suited in terms of the relationship between the collaborators. Whereas with Action Domain Responder, the domain and the responder never actually talk to each other. Uh, again, we usually think of the, it being bad form for the view to update the model. In this case, the, the responder and the domain never speak to each other. The action talks to the domain, it feeds some information back, and then it feeds that through responder and it builds the response. The neat thing about this is you're probably already doing something very close to this right now in your model view controller applications. With very little tweaking, you can make your MVC apps into ADR apps. Uh, or you can start your next application with the ADR idea in mind and, build, and start with single action controllers with separated responders and a cohesive domain model. That's a very brief introduction to the action domain responder pattern. Uh, if you like, you can read more about it at uh, the link at the top there, the PM Jones MVC refinement. That's the ADR paper. Uh, if, you're, if you have a legacy application that you're suffering under and you want to modernize it, you can go to LeanPub, MLA, PHP, and get the Modernizing Legacy Apps in PHP book. You can read my blog at paulmjones.com. You can hit me up on Twitter at PM Jones. Of course, please rate this talk at Joined In. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks, Paul. Thanks for joining us for another Nomad PHP Lightning Talk. If you'd like to give a Lightning Talk, please email me at joe at, ph at nomadphp.com. Make sure you visit Joined In and leave Paul some feedback. Thanks.